I get some of the crazy coolest stuff. It works out just perfect for me because I'm uh, I'm always mixing and uh, or working on a music project and people will just send me and I monitor every single comment message person that subscribes. I go to their site and make a little contact with them at least um, to show them somebody's there, you know. And uh, no, that doesn't matter right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Man, I got a real Fu Manchu going on here. I've never had a beard before. For some reason, I I know real reason. I guess I my well, lack of razors. Maybe I uh, I didn't want to invest in razors. I I decided I wasn't going to shave for while I was doing this. So that'll be two. It's a two-year project. And uh, I need some redneck high tea. It's getting dark out. I mean, I, I don't go outside too much. I'm, uh, I should. I should. I used to walk around, you know, like a half mile here every day. Lately, I've been. But it's if you do any audio and video production, this stuff is so time-consuming, and to do the sheer volume of work that I've done in the last six months. Let's see, it started on, yeah, well, yeah, six months and a few days uh, and have anything come out at all is amazing. But I've had, you know, there's probably four or five of them that are astounding and they'll hold up with anything in the world. Then there's some that are just, meh, you know, <laughs> every artist has that, you know, yeah, probably shouldn't have done that or I could have, I always think, oh man, what was I thinking? I should have approached that differently and mixed that differently. Redneck high tea in the world's filthiest microwave. I can't run the microwave and the, let's see if I can straighten this damn thing out. I've never had one before. I don't know beard etiquette. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? It's like a damn Fu Manchu thing. <laughs> I didn't notice. I usually keep it tied up, you know. It's like, uh, it's getting sort of, uh, when you can, uh, how's he, how's he deliver that line? When you, when you, oh, uh, when you can snatch the compressor from my hand, you may leave. <laughs> Audio engineer, Kung Fu. I always thought in that show, I'm going to get, get into some stuff here, uh, reminding myself, uh, I want to go outside a little bit today though, because uh, if, you, if you're if uh, you a person that wants to make music and do nice mixes and just live the life, one thing is uh, if you can't hear the same song hundreds of times and sort of not only tolerate that but still totally get into it every time and uh, you probably should consider another career because uh, that's what it is at any level when you're trying to like really do good mixes I probably hear I couldn't tell you how many hundreds and thousands of times I go over every second of these things and that's just what it takes and you know doing it professionally for other people it's the kind of thing too where that was a real you know, I used to be like, well, if I do a good job, these people will be impressed. And, I, you know, charge enough money to where it'd be like a couple grand a day, sometimes three grand, sometimes one, depending on what was going on, you know. So I'd be like, if I just go 20 hours straight and make this awesome, I get three grand, you know. And I get to go buy a bunch of Coke and hookers. <laughs> now, I really didn't get into that. My addiction problem I'm putting the essential ingredient of uh, uh, redneck high tea scalding hot water tea bag simple recipe uh, and uh, then here comes is that hot enough well let's pretend like TV and then here comes the Mountain Dew but uh, you know I, I uh, Kind of one of the amazing things about this, I have a rare neurological disease, and it's it's the most painful condition known to medical science, which is I smoke almost constantly because I quit for a couple years and the pain got a whole lot worse. And I've quit a year and it helps. Smoking helps with this disease I have, which is centered around your head, face, and neck. It's it's 
agonizing. The only time I talk is on my vlog, and uh, it's agonizing pain. I used to be really funny, you know, uh, but it's so life sort of become like a. I went a few years at a time without talking. I couldn't for a couple years, so it's a weird deal. And uh, let me see if this is hot enough. But caused all because of all this, though, I became a morphine addict and was for about a decade. And we're talking like a bad ass thousand milligrams a day at least habit, you know, costing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and just you know. Uh, it got out of hand like it always does and but it was by prescription you know and uh it, it just is one of those things it's a real problem in america or in the world actually that ought to be hot enough um yeah i was laughing uh i forgot my train of short train kind of like Wayne's World in <laughs> that one Wayne's World I can't remember WW1 or WW2 he's like hi I'm Wayne let me bring you up to speed <laughs> this is my friend Garth party on Garth party on Wayne let me see if I can get outside a little bit today oh man Maybe Jewel will drop by. 7.54 in and I've said nothing of value. So, uh, you know, I talked one time, for me, not only mixing, but uh, in life in general, and I'm not here to, to give you big fucking life lessons. My neighbor over there does that. He's like a... Um, it's it always pisses me off, you know. He knows nothing about me and sort of an ignorant fuck, I'll just say it, you know. And claims he was a Navy SEAL or some secret operations guy, lost his leg and the and some non-existent. Anyway, that's all made up bullshit. But he's always like trying to teach you. Now you use toilet paper, literally. You use your toilet paper this way, you know. It's like, dude, fuck off. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't, you couldn't get a more ignorant fuck trying to teach you life lessons, you know, and, uh, he has no idea. I'm, like, considered just completely insane and totally dangerous. <laughs> Nine out of ten doctors prefer, you know, uh, he doesn't have, it's just crazy. So, anyway, uh, but context, I talked about context in, in my vlog once before, and, sort of the right side of your brain and uh, how I use that constantly in life and in music that I do everything and that's it's sort of getting you kind of doing anything it helps to that's why it helps when people send me uh, all kinds of videos and stuff because it just it takes me away from something I'm too focused with my left brain on trying to get the perfect snare drum sound from a mix say and we're talking I'm talking about audio here a lot of people are interested in that but a little distraction like that helps jog my right brain uh, the overall the thing that sees context and patterns and when I come back I'm like well yeah you're getting a great fucking sounding snare drum but the rest of the mix is shit you know <laughs> so it, it helps me to go and, and then finally at the end of the mix I'm like man what was I thinking that snare drum did it it didn't even belong anywhere near forward or present in the mix you know it should be delayed and pan slightly left and leave it alone um, but that's just been so key to me to, to be able to step back like with my sight you know, oh, thumbs down, oh, motherfucker, this and that. I'm a tiny little bitty guy, sight, you know, it's a little bitty sight guy doing music on the internet. Not all that important, you know. And some days I'm like, you know, it's, I'm notifying the world of the second coming or something, you know. Well, I got a thumbs down and I have to murder this motherfucker, you know. It's like, who gives a shit, you know, nobody. Uh, except, you know eventually I hope they will but uh, 
somebody in my that watches my vlog sort of made fun of me about that i said well you know i was talking about i go well you know it's how you get contacts on things it's uh get the right side of your brain it's like uh a uh um it's a deal where um you know context is we know we're in the universe in the milky way uh you know in our solar system on planet earth uh, in the united states and the state i'm in and having all that context if you can kind of stand back it just it's essential and it helps i mean in my retort allow me to retort uh it was a long time ago but this person said something about oh well, duh we don't know we're in the universe or the milky way or something but let's it was on planet earth is what she said and uh you know my and that's sort of a valid thing i understand that sort of thing i want to see what i can I've never allocated anything from over here. I don't pinch stuff. But, uh, but uh, wow, this guy's actually, oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, like the, uh, the the guy who, who maintains this place uh, works over here. He has, I've never, I don't mess with the local or the, the help because it always leads to just trouble. It's best to just keep it business and clean. But um, imagine if you didn't have that constant assurance that you know what country you're in and what state you're in and what house you belong in. And, and even if you didn't know we're in what solar system we're in, you know, in the context of the universe, imagine how lost you would feel, you know. It's all about context. I, I'm, I'm just amazed at how much mixing music and this is getting her way out there, I know. But uh, where am I? There's the old RV over there on 13 and good. But I'm constantly amazed. Like some of the vocals I do, um, the music is a whisper even in the headphones. And I'm basically, I can duplicate Axel Rose's voice. It's And it sounds as pleasant as his, but I don't like it. And I think people of a certain age like pleasant sounds. I know I'm one of those people now. Um, but uh, contact is, is, and compression on your, your, your instruments helps keep the volume perfect so you can achieve that context in a mix. It's like, you know, I did, I covered Godzilla, and basically it's sort of a very low, you know, history shows again and again, huh? really kind of like at that volume at some parts. But in relationship to the mix, when you dial it in just right, it sounds wicked, you know. I mean, I don't like, I, I, that's fun. I do those kind of for fun, really. I'm sort of poking fun at some things and heavy metal is one of them. I love metal, don't get me wrong. But it's, you know, <laughs> it's something that's <clears throat> right to be sort of, that's poked at. <clears throat> to me, it's amazing how simple compared with orchestral stuff that I do all the time how simple uh, some of these songs are uh, to do. It, 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 I can literally lay down uh, guitar, bass, and drums, and, and a vocal, and sometimes a few minutes on something that, uh, you know, it, I thought, oh, this will take all day. It's just, it goes really quick, because they're so simple. There she blows. This is a neat, a really interesting looking building. You know, I don't know what this guy, I don't know what he's all about. I mean, basically I had cancer when I came here and uh, I think my mom told him this fucker's dying of cancer, you know. I'm better now, I think, you know, they, they gave me a, like a 50-50 chance over a, of it coming back or 50 50 of it oh here well i guess it's a fucked up deal i don't mind i've had a great life you know i don't think i'm gonna die i, I might i don't care either way it's, it's all good but um what was the deal oh yeah there's the kind of cancer i had uh colon and liver uh the, the doctor came in trying to sell me chemotherapy and uh basically and uh he said uh 
because of the kind of cancer that I had. This was at Cedar sinai in, in Los Angeles, the finest hospital in the world. If you're sick, go there. I wouldn't go anywhere else. It was incredible. It's all computerized and automated. But the doctor said, well, there's a 50% chance this cancer will return within two years. But he was trying to sell me chemo. And he goes, and if it does, it's 100% fatal. So that was in 09. I've had my two years now. Uh, maybe back. I, that's not the point of all this. The point of this for me is uh, doing the work for myself and not for other people, finally, that I'm fully capable of doing, both artistically and technically, and making these things sound absolutely incredible. And I don't think anybody will appreciate it now, but how many times have you... Uh, uh, you know, heard a song and you go, that song is incredible. Somebody said it today. They'd never heard Your Time Is Gonna Come by Led Zeppelin. It was, I just saw comments flash by, now they go so fast. I read everything and look at it and remove the ones that say, fuck you, just because that ain't cool. And not much of that happens, but um, what I'm hoping is, you know, when I grew up, I thought, like Michael Jackson wrote this uh, uh, I hear some neighbors. I should pretend like I'm on the phone. Um, I thought he had written uh, Rock and Robin, and uh, I, you know, so I, I associated that with him. Or hundreds of times in my life, like a great, great song, so like that. Anyway, what I was thinking was, uh, I like places like this, just kind of funky old stuff laying around. And uh, there they are. They're probably looking at me over here like, you crazy mother. Here, to make it more socially acceptable, I'll pretend like I'm on the phone. Yeah. So anyway, Bill, I was talking a million five with your people. Then they came back with a counter offer. Basically, the whole thing got nasty. Hi, guys. <laughs> the phone call bit. So anyway, me and my people got together. We've come up with a package. <laughs> I got you a package, right? <laughs> uh, I'm just all over the place today. But uh, anyway, what I'm hoping is in the future, probably distant future seeming now, people will go, wow, these sound great. And these are great songs. And they'll have forgotten all about fucking super tramp i'm not pissed at super tramp or roger there's a whole long story behind that thing i did super tramp not bloody well right but the other one i'll never do another suit well i might do another super tramp song because that one will be up i haven't challenged it yet i did a bunch of research it's a kooky story basically they are in a fucking blood feud over who makes the money from publishing and uh i've been uh I can't, I shouldn't say anymore, I've been dealing with one of the band members themselves, sort of, well, definitely, and uh, also another uh, ruling out publishing companies, UMG and, and SMG and, and, and WIA and, and uh, if, uh, all of these companies, you know, to see who actually handles it, um, and so it came down to somebody was sort of hiding behind... Uh, a trumped up sort of company claiming one band members claiming that oh I'm filled with love and it's all okay when in reality it is not okay they hate each other and they're super pissed and they're super ready to sue so anyway cool guys though really in the end nice 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 enough they just want to make money on their stuff and that's my point I'm trying to give you money dude who do I send a check to so I can cover your damn tune and anyway uh, the bottom line is YouTube will put it back up for me and uh, I uh, I have to uh, if I just fill out the, the counter thing and I've got every right to do the song on many different grounds but uh, if I just fill out uh, they'll put it back up and then these guys have to sue me and, and they're nice enough cool enough guys um, but uh, the thing about it is they have they would have to spend money to stop me from doing that and you know you kind of think that just here's the thing i learned in, in la 
work and run in a recording studio, you kind of assume, well, sure, everybody who's famous is also rich. Not the case at all. I can't tell you how many broke, beaten down, once were, still are rock stars, were begging me to give them discounts to come in and record this and that. Usually, uh, you know, sometimes good, mostly harebrained, grandiose ideas of, of recapturing lost fame. Lightning struck once and they're going to try to make it happen again and the reason it happened the first time is because you know the political, socio-economic, the world was just right for that song at that time and it was a one hit, you know, a lot of that. <clears throat> Not that he's like that but uh, I don't know if you guys know the song. I actually became friends, uh, pretty good friends, with a guy named John E. Edwards, and he he does a song. It goes, "Sunshine, go all the way today. I don't feel much like dancing." Wrong key. Sunshine, go all the way today. I don't feel much like dancing. Sunshine, da 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 da. Oh, how much does it cost? I'm buying. The time is. Anyway, John E. Edwards. He had one hit, and this is in the like mid to late. 90s he's still like living and that was when I was a child in school cool guy I like John but it's kind of an example of how somebody had one hit and he was able to sort of live off of that and and then finally it ended up because he was famous he was able to stay here and there for a long time kind of it was pretty crazy he's one of the many many people like that who uh, uh, I became friends with actually he had a record deal with Richard Brooks who plays a lawyer, a did play a lawyer, swell looking black guy, cool guy, Richard Brooks, uh, on uh, bah, bah, that show, LA, is it LA something, crime scene or whatever the hell it is, the one with the noise, bah, bah, um, with that jackass Christopher Maloney in it, the most arrogant person I've ever laid eyes on. Anyway, Richard owns a record company, Richard Brooks, and he, uh, Flat Top Entertainment, and Johnny Edwards was on his label. So I got to be friends with both of those guys. And uh, anyway, Richard was actually his making no sense story, but he was, he actually read for Pulp Fiction and got the part to play Marcellus Wallace, but turned it down because of when they were in the uh, uh, basement, turned over the barrel, the character had to be in the basement and basically anally assaulted, and uh, Ned Beatty did a movie in the 70s called Deliverance, and that, that scene, he did a scene like that where he was anally raped, squeal like a pig, boy! Ah, he's got a party mouth, <laughs> that thing. And uh, that scene sort of ruined his career. So I'm way off the course here in track. This is like my one of my favorite spots anywhere to sit on this grate here. I've always... Uh, I've always liked sewage and duct works. <laughs> I don't know, it's just me. Sewage and gutter work. <laughs> uh, haven't had enough for I'm really just waking up again. All I do is sleep and work pretty much. I'm on a mission from God. <laughs> but uh Yeah, so anyway he turned down the damn part wise decision I guess, huh? But uh, that just reminded me of all the one-hit wonders that I've, I've met and known and worked with and stuff. Um, you know, a lot of stuff's going on. YouTube's changed their policies. Um, I came within real close to getting my whole site and it doesn't matter I'll start over again this is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life it's kinda nice when you know it's like I'll never have I'll never I don't want to be married again I'll never be with another woman again I'm good with that there have been thousands of them I was usually pretty cool kind of a dick in a lot of cases to them wish I would have been nicer um, or something I, I, I don't have the answer there for anybody um, but, uh, 
you know, it's kind of neat. I don't, I can't explain the feeling that I've had for months now, six months. I've been doing this 24 hours a day. It's a two-year project, and I don't see it ever stopping. I just am having so much fun. And I live alone, see, like this. I never, there's old people around here only. Not that I wouldn't even enjoy talking to. I don't have the time, A, and B. I like my own space. I don't like, I don't know. Interaction with other people always leads to just having to put up with bullshit. I mean, you know, and little jabs. We always take little jabs at each other. Silly, silly human beings. Um... That's such a weird shot there. There's something very kind of weird about this whole area. No, my favorite scene in Spinal Tap is uh, when uh, they break up and he goes like, "What do you think you'll ever, uh, you know, you think you'll ever play together again with uh, Nigel?" And it's David St. Hubbins. He goes like, uh, it's so, such a great delivery. He goes, no, we shan't work together again. <laughs> I love that shit because it's so wrong, you know. It's so, it's incorrect totally. But no, it's just how bitter, pit, the, the Super Tramp deal reminded me of that. How bitter, pissed off musicians get. I've been there. Uh, but it was like, uh, no, no. No, we shan't work together again. <laughs> shan't. Oh, man. I don't know who these people are. They only know me as the crazy bastard who walks around talking to himself, holding like a fire stick in his hand or something, you know. Oh, man. My spare. Brand new spare. Wrong size, but it worked. It's biting the dust. So, anyway. You know, the feeling I've had, it's like... How can I expect a great feeling, but it's like, you know, I'm not well, I don't, I, I'm just fighting bitter everything to sort of get this done, and, uh, Hal, what do you have open? Uh, I don't show Hal too much, because there's some stuff I did on there, software I made, I don't want to be too much seen, I don't really care that much, but... You know, I, I had the feeling in all of this, it's like, there's a certain, I don't even know what, what the technical term for that feeling is, right? <laughs> Fucking rom moronic, probably, but it must be like guys in war who are surrounded by other bad guys. You know, they're totally surrounded. There's no way when they can win when they kind of look at each other and go, oh, this is fucked, you know, but they're still happy. They're just like, well, this is kind of fucked. And then one looks at the other and goes, yeah, you know, but going out, let's make it a hell of a deal, you know. <laughs> uh, all the people throughout history who've sort of, I sort of, not that I'm like that, but I sort of identify with that sometimes. It's like, I've done so many things in my life that just turned out like amazing. And I thought at first, like, oh, this one, you know, could work, but probably not, just like everything else. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's like, Everybody on the planet has heard it or had a piece of it or something. Um, or it made me a lot of money. Stuff like that. So, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't hurt to sort of... You have to have a vision, a dream, and then be relentless in its pursuit. And, and the thing that I, I know is really helpful to is being alone. You don't have to listen to other people's negative, come-down bullshit. But the key to all that, write it out, be realistic don't bullshit yourself be honest with yourself and realize what you're truly capable of you know and not capable of and then do it you know make it happen um it's like a nike commercial just do it brah but uh i uh <coughs> um Oh, motherfucker youtube's making hell stand down they've been see they've changed their policies lately and uh, they're floodgating me so far. But the thing is, it's just so vast. YouTube is, I couldn't explain with, it, with, without a whole hour long session how incredible it is and how vast it is. Uh, and, and the potential for the future, you know. 
All classes should be taught by expert teachers with highly targeted learning in a classroom, on video, with a supervisor in the room. I imagine how much faster life would have went and smarter I would be if the, the teachers would have been absolute top-of-the-line experts every session, every time targeted. I think it'll be used for that a lot within in-classroom supervisors and then the kids watch highly tar targeted videos and learn things properly. I think that's one probably that's already going on but not as much as it will but in the future it'll be a drop zone for messages across decades it, it it'll turn into a real-time network uh, i predict of video uh, real-time video com they're already starting that, a real-time video conferencing network i mean i'm getting conspiracy like but it's sort of you know part of my job as an engineer and, and hardware software you know physics person you know uh you could technically call me a scientist, uh, although, you know, actually I have, <laughs> surprisingly and frighteningly, I have uh, consulted on stuff, you know, on, on the scientific, using my expertise there, <laughs> as frightening as that, I always question that whenever, it's weird, you know, it's like when I first, uh, another composer called me a composer, I was like, no, no, I just make up music, you know, things sneak up on you, <laughs> you know. Um, one day you're in the womb and amniotic fluid and the next day you're like machine gunning down, you know, whales and teddy bears and shit. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I'll, I'm going to stop. I'm trying to figure out an ending. But yeah, I loved those guys in Dying Breed. It was like, I, I think I forgot that story again at the top. I'll say it again. They were talking about Trent Reznor thrash metal guys never been in a real studio came in my studio in LA just and when I saw it booked I was like oh man they're like death metal thrash metal fuck you know usually it doesn't need mastered at all just slam it to the limits and forget about it so they came in I liked them they were the meekest guys they were sitting in the corner and stuff and uh funny guys you know I thought they'd be just they, they were tattooed kind of whiskey trash you know like I was <laughs> I'm not tattooed though might get them um and anyway we were talking i was talking somehow trent came up and he goes oh yeah he goes well dude pretty hate machine he goes dude i gotta respect a guy who wrote his entire first album about one girl <laughs> you know i just gotta respect that so i love that i was exchanging emails with uh somebody last night I don't know why I love I've written a couple of songs and, and originals and, and videos and shit about that sort of obsessive thing you know of like and it's but when it gets funny like they did it on Trent's tour I know to be totally funny it's the something I can never have slash still tour because that, that kind of obsession is so there's just something fucked up about it but it's kind of cool if you really you know it's like my second wife, I think somebody broke into our house and stole all our shit. It's this kind of obsessive thinking, you know, that goes nowhere and, and torpedoes everything about you. But you do it, you know. Uh, somebody broke into our house and stole all our shit and, you know, tore the place up and just, it was a disaster. How's this looking? I've never had a Fu Manchu before. And anyway, so after the cops had left and everything, it was a few hours later, you know, and I just couldn't let it go. And like at three in the morning, that was at six at night when we found the robbery. Like at three in the morning, I was still thinking, who did it? Who, what's possible? How can I murder them? You know, this is 30 years ago. How can I get revenge or find my shit, anything? And I was sitting alone in the living room and she comes by at like three in the morning I'm just kind of sitting there you know did that insert man tapping hands did it did it did it you know I'm going like how can I fuck these guys up how can I get my shit I just I'm so I felt devastated and, and uh what do you, what's the word violated yeah <laughs> so anyway uh, she goes what are you doing up and I go oh I'm just I cannot let this thing go I'm still thinking about these fucking people that obviously knew us that ripped our shit off and she goes she sat down beside me and she was a crazy bitch too hey Kelly <laughs> we're friends now I, the only one I'm friends with Kelly that's happening Kelly she'll never watch this anyway she's pretty cool 
still pretty cool mean just a badass woman and she sits down beside me at three in the morning and she in a serious way without kidding she goes yeah i'm fucking pissed too she goes like let's dwell on it <laughs> let's dwell on it and we did you know we finally resolved it some way uh uh the stuff was i don't know it was a whole deal anyway this is fucking long 36 yeah, for me, it really is a feeling. I'm here all alone. I never talk to anyone else. I'm not well. It's just sort of like a thing of I'm making sort of peace with these songs and like sort of putting them away forever. Things that were a huge part of my life and I loved so much. And so many thousands around the world do is what I'm finding. But it's almost like being one of those guys like Butch and Sundance, you know, on on the side of the cliff they know they're gonna you know going out in a hail of bullets kind of thing and i don't want to go out and i don't want to meet a hail of bullets but it's like you know for me all i had left was the music and i lost sight of that for a long time you know i worked in the music industry i forgot all about doing my own music i did but i didn't try to do anything with it you know but it's the sort of thing there's sort of a, a probably highly overly romanticized feeling of like you know what I'm making a statement. <laughs> That's very natural born killers. It's like, uh, well, why killing you makes a statement. What's he saying? He goes like, I'm not exactly 100% sure what that is. <laughs> but he's going to kill him anyway. Uh, I need to watch some movies. I used to, I haven't watched, I don't watch TV. I don't take phone calls and I don't watch, I just make music. And, uh, those other things aren't going to do a damn thing for me. And I just know if I keep making great remakes and even better than the original sounding with nice artistic slants, something... I've worked in the industry. Somebody will want to start putting them in films. I'll start a, a music library if I live long enough. You know, Sundance. Uh, but... Uh, there... There's just something. If you just follow your heart and do something with with all your heart and and good and the best you can and get better every time. I learn so much every day. I've been in Logic Pro for since it came out and I learn something about it every day. Uh, incredible stuff, the handy stuff, you know. Um, but I think you know in life, just doing it. I don't feel like jamming every day. Definitely. Uh, but just doing it is uh, is the thing. And, you know, something good always comes out of it. I've never been sorry, but few, very few times if I just said, oh, I'm dying to sit down and, you know, track the song, program drums, play bass, do all of this shit. You know, oh, I'm just so dying. To, some days, yeah, but usually no but it's my practice i think if you have a practice and you're doing something constructive i i just don't see anything bad coming out of it uh except maybe you know super tramp will dispatch google assassins on my ass you know um they seem like pretty cool guys and and i can tell it's okay so that'll be resolved soon but it's a it's such a great sounding file and a neat take great little videos uh poor zero Super Tramp killed Zero. <laughs> it's a little character, like a yarn man that was in the, the video. It was just cool. I, I liked it. It was great. And, and they, it got taken down, copyright, and a strike. But, um, I'm all good. What should I do? People seem to... Nine out of ten dentists surveyed prefer, preferred the poltergeist ending. Stolen from Ace Ventura in one of his movies. I don't remember. Oh, Pet Detective. And furthermore, I can't remember the exact lines, but I do remember. Proximity effect on the mic. People, people, this house is clear. Mixed with pissed off rapper ending. Yeah, peace out, motherfuckers.